At that time, Jesus warned his disciples against the danger of falling into heretical ideas based on either absolute existence or on absolute non-existence. He told them to follow the middle path. As his disciples heard him teach, their faith in the divinity of Jesus became stronger. Jesus told Peter to establish a church where people could celebrate the eternal life and saving power of God. Jesus stressed that God's church is one body. Its strength should be used for the benefit of those in need. Jesus told the disciples that there would soon be much suffering. He predicted that he himself would be killed and would rise from death shortly thereafter. Jesus taught that these events would fulfill the promise of God to save his sons and daughters. The sacrifice was necessary if Jesus was to be a true Savior. Jesus stressed to his disciples that for them to follow the path he was on, they would have to give up their attachments to body and life. Later, Jesus and three disciples went up on a mountain. Jesus meditated and prayed. God spoke to the disciples, affirming his choice of Jesus as Savior. In his preaching, Jesus continued to emphasize faith as necessary for spiritual strength. He taught people to cultivate humility and to become childlike in their trust of God's mercy. The humble person will be well prepared for his or her lessons in heaven. And as for children themselves, they need love, protection, and nurturing. Great suffering will continue in the world until all children are cared for properly. Jesus also emphasized forgiveness of others. Even if wronged hundreds of times by a man, a person should ideally continue to forgive from his heart. To not forgive will result in inner pain. People can obtain rebirth in heaven where they gradually become perfect like God. In heaven there are no hindrances to learning. To encourage worldly goodness, Jesus told people not to kill, not to commit adultery, not to steal, not to lie, and to love their neighbors. For those who wish to go further in becoming godlike in this world, Jesus recommend generously giving to those in need and diligently following the selfless path of wisdom. The way of virtue, however, is not the only way to heaven. For God, in his compassionate mercy, has provided an easy way. God saves all who truly believe in him and his divine grace. Any who have such faith will go to heaven, and in heaven there is no pain. All is bliss. Because God is infinitely kind, even those who come to God late in life will be granted entrance to heaven. God will appear before believers at the moment of their death. As they worship God, their thoughts will not be troubled. Jesus continued to preach this good news as he traveled to Jerusalem. Jesus also again predicted his death and resurrection. While on the road, Jesus healed. He made the blind see. At Jerusalem, the entrance was grand. The crowds shouted praise to Jesus as God's messenger. Again, Jesus taught his disciples about faith. With absolute faith and no hint of doubt, anything is possible. Prayers said with full faith are answered. Religious leaders and state officials questioned the authority of Jesus. In response, he pointed to their hypocrisy and greed. For the time being, Jesus avoided arrest. During this time in Jerusalem, Jesus proclaimed God's greatest commandment. Above all, Jesus said, you should love God with all your heart and mind. God's second great commandment is to love your neighbor and yourself equally. If you follow these two basic commandments as best you can, God will be well pleased. You will be in agreement with God's will. Jesus told people to model themselves after him, not after those leaders who hurt and unfairly burden living beings. Jesus taught people to recognize hypocrisy. 
Jesus described absolute reality as non-dual. He said, We are all brothers and sisters in the Godhead. Our one Father is in heaven, and I, he said, am your teacher on his behalf. The key to success on the spiritual path is giving up arrogance and ego. Anyone who does so sufficiently will see the truth of God's mercy. The easy way is real and valid. No one should confuse or interfere with the simplicity and sureness of this way. It must not be narrowed. Direct appeal to God by faith results in salvation. Sincere seekers will enter heaven. They will be given eternal happiness. Jesus taught that there will come a time when the peace and love of God's kingdom will fill the universe. But much suffering will occur between now and then. There is still the cost of past and present mistakes to be paid. Only God the Father knows when the blessed stage will be reached, when all conform to His will. God rejoices in the thought of universal freedom from suffering. Jesus told people that they should really try their best to follow God's will in their day-to-day -day lives. He suggested that people look at all living beings as if they were looking at Jesus Himself. If a person is hungry, imagine him or her as Jesus being hungry. Feed that person. If water is needed, give water. If shelter or clothing is needed, give those. If there is illness, provide whatever help possible. Comfort those in prison. Anything done for the brothers and sisters of Jesus is done for him also. And every living being is a brother or sister to Jesus. Meanwhile, the time of the crucifixion was coming closer. The plot was being laid among the religious and state leaders. Judas, a disciple, helped them in exchange for money. Later, he would hang himself out of guilt. At the Last Supper, Jesus predicted that he would be betrayed by one of his own disciples. Then, Jesus offered his disciples bread and juice, which he blessed as symbols of his own body and blood. This ritual would serve as a link to Jesus over generations of followers. It would be a reminder of his sacrifice. It would be a reminder of God's mercy. It would be a reminder that all the living can and will be saved. As the end quickly approached, Jesus went off alone to pray to his heavenly Father. He affirmed his commitment to do God's will. Then, just after he rejoined his disciples, armed men came to take Jesus into captivity. He did not resist and told others not to defend him. Jesus pointed out that violence must stop somewhere. During his trials, Jesus was largely silent. No real evidence could be found to convict him of a crime punishable by death, but those in power charged Jesus with blasphemy. Then, at the urging of the leaders, the crowds turned their opinion against Jesus. The people chose to have him crucified. The governor ordered Jesus to be beaten and nailed to a cross. And these things were done. Jesus was abused to the utmost by men of violent arrogance. But Jesus remained silent. He patiently accepted all this pain. And finally, Jesus died. On Sunday, two close followers went to the tomb of Jesus. But Jesus was not there. These women then saw Jesus alive, just as predicted. He told them to tell the disciples to go to Galilee. In Galilee, the disciples of Jesus bowed before him as God. As they worshipped, they heard him say, My teachings are true. Spread these teachings to every person. Teach all to follow God's commandments. Have no doubt. God is eternal. And I am always with each person to give divine support and guidance. <laughs>